I can't go. I can. All right, then go. Don't just sit there gloating. Put your word down. What's that? What's that? B U M bum. <laughs> Letters scored, double words scored, that's uh, that's 16 and 14, 30. What filthy minds you have got? What's wrong with that? It's vulgar, that's what's wrong with it. Honestly, this is supposed to be an erudite game calculated to increase one's word power. I mean, just look at that board. It's disgusting. <laughs> There's not one word you put down that can be used in decent company. <laughs> There's not one word of more than four letters. <laughs> there's nothing more than a display of calculated filth. Yeah, but they still count, don't they? No, I don't. <laughs> yes, they do. If they're in the dictionary, they count, and bums in the dictionary. <laughs> Your go. I'm not so sure that bum is in the dictionary. I mean, you don't think all them professors up at Oxford is going to waste their time discussing the merits and the meanings of the word bum. <laughs> they don't use dirty words like that. My bum's not dirty. <laughs> I mean, my bum is the American for tramp. Ha, ha! Well, that's where I got you. That's where I got you. Cos you're not allowed to use colloquialisms or slang. All right. I'll stick to me English bum. <laughs> which is the part of your anatomy that swells out the back of your trousers. <laughs> you go. Ha, oh, this is ridiculous. I mean, how can you compete with this sort of thing? Well, I'd have thought this game was going to degenerate into a mere catalogue of crudities. I would never have started it in the first place. You're just not because I'm winning. Oh, well, you don't care what sort of words you put down. That's not difficult, is it? I mean, look, look, look at the difference in, in the quality of my words and your words. Well, at least I'm having a go at keeping the tone up. Yeah, but you're not winning, are you? And that's what it's all about, mate. You got an S? Supposing I have. Well, you could stick it on the end of my bum and make it bum. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not if you don't mind. <laughs> well, at least I can clean your word up. B U M bum, your word. B U M P S bum, piss, my word. That's a three and one to three and three and one to eleven. Isn't that lovely? Bumps. That S has let me in nice. S O D sob. <laughs> Letter, uh, three, oh, one, D, two, three, six all together. I'm not allowing sod. Why not? Nothing wrong with that. Piece of turf. Shakespeare uses it. I don't care if Barbara Cartland uses it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the way you meant it. You meant it as a swear word. You always mean them as swear words because you are dirty and crude and, and horrible. You're a go. I can't go. I can see one. I'm not interested. Have you got a blank? I'm not telling you. You can make it a K and stick it on the end no! of the end, you know. I will not stoop to using obscenities. <laughs> Besides, you've already used it. You can't go, can you? I didn't say that. I think I shall change all of my letters. You can't, there are only four left. I shall change three of them then. Oh, well, if I was Polish, I suppose I could have a stab at it. Jigwigigigs. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go, can you? No, I can't. I can. C R U M. Well, what's that? Crumb. Crumb? <laughs> what you get in bed when you've been eating biscuits? <laughs> Like that. Don't you? There's a B on the end of it. Is there? Well, no wonder you keep putting down filthy words. They're the only ones you can spell. <laughs> That's a smart go. No, no, well, I think I can still go. Uh, what's that word you've got there? Well, that, that's pet. Pet. C R U M P E T. <laughs> Crumpet. <laughs> Which you also get in bed. <laughs> That's 
three into vowel seven, and, 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 that's thirteen. Triple letter, double word, that's uh, twenty-nine altogether. That's um, five hundred and twenty-three I've got, and and fifty-six to you. <laughs> Well, you want my can if you know them. There's those two K's and an N's I just threw away. Di da, di da, di da, di da, di da, di da, di da. Knickers! <laughs> that's 50 for me for getting rid of all my letters, and that's, uh, di -di -di -di. that's 535 points I've won by. At a penny a point, that's £5.35 new pence show me. <laughs> Do you like another game? No. It's a good game, isn't it? It is. When it's played properly. Not when it's played by dirty old men like you. <laughs> Who's that? Don't stop with me. Every time there's a knock on the door, you say, Who's that? <laughs> That's a very annoying habit you've got. I mean, how do I don't know what it is? I mean, I've got x ray eyes. I shall go to the door. I shall open it. If it's got anything remotely to do with you, I shall tell you who it is. Well, you don't open it, nobody will know, will they? It's all right, all right, don't knock the bleeding door down. <laughs> oh, hello, Vicar. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Scepter. Inclement weather, is it not? Oh, yes. It's most inclement, yes. It is on nights like these that one's thoughts go out to our sailors and fishermen. Yes, yes. Indeed. It must be very empty out there. I wouldn't fancy it. Not I, indeed, no. Funny how we all take a bit of fish for granted, don't we? Oh, we do, we do. Yes, indeed we do. Yeah. Hardly a thought to be spare for those brave souls. Quite, quite. How much do you want? Um, <laughs> Well, I, I, I thought you was collecting. Oh, goodness me, no. Oh, you better come inside, then. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's most kind of you. Who was it? The vicar. Oh, God, is he on the ear all again? <laughs> My father. He knows you're here. <laughs> it's just a joke. <laughs> Uh, would you like to go inside? Thank you very much. He's had two bob already off me this year. He must think we're made of money. For... <laughs> oh, gold. <laughs> Hello, Vicar. I, I didn't recognise you with your clothes on. <laughs> I'm in your suit. Oh, it's a nice one, isn't it? It's not one of ours, is it? I beg your pardon? You didn't get it out of that sack full we sent you for Bangladesh. Father, the vicar is hardly likely to go nicking clothes intended for refugees. No, I didn't mean anything. I wouldn't blame him if he did. I mean, his need is as great as theirs. He hasn't got much. I mean... Uh, Father, would you like to go and make a cup of tea? It's most inclement out. Oh, you don't want tea, vicar. You want something to warm you up? There's a nice little drop of gold watch. Thank you very much. And God bless you and the devil miss you. Don't give me one, will you? <laughs> We'd like to sit down for a couple of minutes. Oh, thank you. Oh, Scrabble, my favourite game. You've just finished, I see. <laughs> High standard. We haven't got the command of words like what you have got. Uh, perhaps you would both like to come round to the vicarage one evening. My wife is a very keen player. We could make up a foursome. Oh, I'd like that. I don't, know, I don't think that's a very good idea. You'd be much too good for us. <laughs> you crucify us. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> As you need. <laughs> oh, greatly improved, thank you. The vicar's had a touch of housemaid's knee. Has he? Oh, I'm sorry. An occupational hazard, I'm afraid. One has to spend a great deal of time kneeling in my game. <laughs> you want to get your missus to get you some pads put up in the chaises. All she wants is one of her padded bras, cut it in two and strap it around your knees. It fits lovely. I knew a carpet layer once swore by them, and he reckoned uh, that... Father, I'm sure that the vicar is more than capable of making his own medical arrangements without laying himself open to a charge of transvestism. <laughs> Would you like to go and put the blanket on the horse and go to bed? No. I want to talk to the vicar. 
Then kindly moderate your language. Uh, to what do we owe the pleasure of this visit? Now, if it is about me not uh, coming to church, I feel I have made my position quite clear about that in the past. Whilst I hold nothing against you personally, intellectually, I am, like Bertrand Russell before me, a humanist. <laughs> Consequently, I cannot subscribe to the Christian ethos or dogma. Yes, yes, I remember our conversation that evening very well. Very cogently reasoned, I thought. Oh. <laughs> I, I remember your argument that Pascal and Calvin were, uh, uh Burks, I think you said. <laughs> it made a great impression on my wife. Did I say that? I'm almost terribly sorry. Not at all. One often gets carried away in a theological discussion. Here, yeah, but I should not have used language like that. Look, but please, uh, explain to your wife that I was a little bit het up and your hospitality was on the generous side. And I was a wee bit Brahms and Liszt. <laughs> Brahms and Liszt. I shall tell her. Uh, no, Mr. Stepto, the reason for my visit is quite different. Uh, frankly, I have come to ask a favour of you. Oh, anything. Please don't hesitate to ask. <laughs> As you may know, this week we are celebrating the centenary of our church. Go away. Yes, <laughs> 100 years of bringing the good word to the people of Shepherd's Bush. Yes, a great deal has changed since then. Yeah, you have a lot of competition from the Muslims now, don't you? <laughs> well, it's true. They were pouring out of that converted cinema last week, like a bus garage it was. I don't regard it as competition. All the great religions of the world are there for the glory of God. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Are ah, there? Well, I wish he'd put up a few round here. The hours and conditions are diabolical. Yes, I am cognizant of the problem. However... Yes, do go on, Vicar. So, we have decided to publish a special centenary edition of our parish magazine. Mm, mm, mm. What a good idea. And I should be glad of any contributions that I can get. I thought so. How much do you want? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean articles. Articles for inclusion. My wife... I thought it would be rather nice if we had articles about some of the more exotic trades and professions that have been carried on in the parish throughout the years. Oh, we've had them round here. That place next door used to be a right old knocking yes, shop. Yes, of <laughs> We did used to get a lot of noise from there. It was a wheelwright. <laughs> ah. And, as you are one of the oldest established firms in the area, we wondered uh, whether one of you would care to write about the history of rag and boning in Shepherd's Bush. I should... Be delighted to do it. So would I. Uh, Father, I think I'd better write it. Oh, I know more than you do. Oh, no, you don't. Sergeant can't write as well as I can. I, I, I mean, I was, I was always top of my class in composition. You know that. I always used to get nine out of ten. I got a star once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, words has always been my strong point. Oh, you leave it to me, Vicar. I want to do it. Oh, you can't do it. You, you have to do something else, won't you? I want to do the article. But you're not going to do the article. I'm the artistic one in this house. Cobblers. You can't even <laughs> spell. Who can't? You can't. I can spell better than you can. Who can? I can. No, you can't. Oh, yes, I can. All right, then. Spell chrysanthemum. C H R I S Christ. It's a C R K H R. Well, not as likely to use a word like chrysanthemum in an article about rag and boning, am I? That's where you're wrong, cos that's the name of Charlie Harris's horse, chrysanthemum. I don't care. I won't mention him. You can't write an article on rag and boning without mentioning Charlie Harris. He'd be furious. His family's been in the business even longer than ours. Then I shall say Charlie Harris and his horse. Because you can't spell chrysanthemum. I can look it up in my dictionary. How can you look it up and you can't spell it? I'll get someone else to spell it for me, then I shall look it up. How do you spell malleable? I'm not interested in spelling malleable. That's bottles for Ari's horse. I'll give a toss whose horse it is. Yeah. How many horses and carts followed Arthur Philpott's coffin in 1928? 23? 36. You don't know nothing. You can't spell. You're not competent. I've been a rag and bone man all my life. For so long. I was a rag and bone man before you was born. You must have been a rag and bone man after your death. How do you know? I'll kill you if you don't shut up. <laughs> Why don't you both write it? Why don't you mind your own brick? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I, I forgot you was there. Oh, it's, 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 it won't work. I mean, I, I can't collaborate with him. 
I mean, I, I come on, undertake work of, of, of a creative nature with someone who gets on your threatening bits as much as he does. <laughs> well, this calls for the judgment of Solomon. You gotta chop him in half. <laughs> Why don't you toss for it? You call, Mr. Septo. Heads. Tails. You lost. You lost. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. <laughs> yeah! You big soft Nelly, what are you? You want to get back to your cock, mate? <laughs> I'm doing it. Don't get upset, Mr. Stepto. We'd still like a contribution from you. Would you? Of course. Anything? Of course, anything you like. Right, you're on. <laughs> I'll go and do it now. Uh, good night, Mr. Stepto, and thank you for the drop of the uh, gold watch. Any time. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, oh, I beg your pardon. I was composing. Uh, allow, allow me to see you out. Thank you very much. May I illustrate my article with, with uh, photographs? Oh, yes, yes, that would be delightful. Well, you karate with me, don't you? I'm so <laughs> excited. Oh, I don't wish for I'm, I'm sure you're going to be most pleased with it. I shall indeed. Here I am. Uh, my, my teacher, she was uh, always complimenting me on my literary effort. I, I was thinking of taking up journalism when I left school. But old misery guts there wouldn't let me. They won't let me do anything. Uh, well, good night, Mr. Stepto. I shall look forward to reading your article. All right, Vicar. Good night, Mr. Stepto. Oh, yes. Pity the poor sailors and fishermen. Are they still out there? <laughs> good night, Mr. Stepto. <laughs> This could be the start of a new career. S T P O. What a stupid place to put an R! <laughs> Why don't I just have A, B, C, or everything else? I have the best sense of stupid. Hey, what's all this rubbish? Oh, that—that that is my research uh, reference. Books, uh, taped interviews, and photographs. I have photographed and interviewed every totter within two miles. I don't mess about. When I do a thing, I do it properly. How much have you written? Mind your own business. You haven't started, have you? Having a bit of a struggle, are you? Don't you worry. It's all up here, mate. I know exactly what I'm going to write. It's just a question of getting it down, that's all. Flo Bear had much the same trouble. He said that every word was like tearing the flesh from his body. Mm. You go away and do yours, go on. I've done it. You've done it? Last week. What have you done? Mind your own business. Well, it can't be much good if you've done it that quickly. It's probably extremely facile. Great works always take a long time. A Hundred Years of Totting by Harold K. Stepto. It'll be 110 by the time you finish. <laughs> a pale, wintry sun shone down out of an opalescent sky as a tired old cart horse. Just... Yeah, well, in, in 1926, during the general strike, under my dad's yeah. leadership, we all... That's Charlie Harris. ...to feed the general marches en route, so to speak. Bleeding liar. Oh, turn that thing off. Well, he's telling lies. I tried to organise that. He wouldn't give you the drippings off his nose. <laughs> what else did he tell you? Oh, he gave me some marvellous material. It was wonderful, a human interest. All about how, when he got married, Charlie had nowhere to live. So he sent his dad to the pictures. And when he got back, his dad found that Charlie had put all his furniture out on a curb. The door was locked. And Charlie made his old dad go and live in the stable. Well, that's not true either. That was me and your grandfather. He's trying to get the credit for everything. He, that article is going to be a tissue of lies. All right then, all right then. I shall interview you and uh, get to your side of it. Uh, had, uh, uh, say, say something uh, into that. Just so as I get a level. What did I say? 
Uh, anything. Uh, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Sausages, eggs and bacon. Sausages? Yeah. You said there weren't any sausages. <laughs> well, there weren't when I'd ate him. He was only six anyway. Six? <laughs> well, I could have had three of them. I'm the one who does the work here. I've been talking like with somebody inside of me every morning. You greedy, you got Look, it out. Are you going and... to interview me or aren't you? I can't sit here all night arguing the toss with you. My time's valuable. <laughs> I'm cooking a breakfast tomorrow morning, right? A testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> His fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. <laughs> yes, yes, that, that's all right. Uh, uh, a Hundred Years of Totting by Harold K. Steptoe. Interview number 26, -er, Albert Steptoe. Uh, Mr. Uh, Steptoe, um, what are your earliest recollections of rag and boning in Shepherd's Bush? I'm not telling you. <laughs> what is the point of having an interview if, if, if you aren't going to say anything? I ain't writing your article for you. I'm not asking you to. I can't blame me. I mean, Boswell could hardly have written his life of Dr. Johnson if every time Boswell asked Johnson a question, Johnson said, I'm not telling you. <laughs> now then, we'll start again. You're just trying to pick my brains. I shall pick them straight out of your ears in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> now then. Oh, Mr. Steptoe, in your 70 years as a rack and bone man, you must have noticed many changes. Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> Huh? Well, what? What are they? <laughs> oh. Oh, we used to have trams in them days. Yes. And we haven't got them now. <laughs> are you trying to take the slush? Oh. Now stop mucking about. Uh, it must have been very difficult driving an horse and a cart in those days. Oh, yes. Dangerous, too. I remember once I had a heavy load and I got me wheels caught in the tram lines at Marble Arch and I had to go the whole way to Putney Depot before I could turn round. Could not they have stuck a number six up the horse's backside, twisted the points and sent you all the way back to Shepherd's Bush? Are you calling me a liar? Yes! <laughs> if you don't take this seriously, I shall switch this machine off and fetch you a knuckle sandwich straight up the Utah. All right? <laughs> uh, tell me, Mr Steptoe, Bearing in mind that this is for a church magazine, consequently we don't want any filth, I realise that is placing you under an unfair handicap. Uh, can you recollect any interesting incidents in your long and varied career as a rag and bone man? Oh, yeah. I remember when I was seven, my dad brought me home in pigeon. Oh. That is nice. And then when it was hard up, I had to bring it down the market and flog it for a tanner. <laughs> oh, that is very sad. I flogged that pigeon 523 times before we was tumbled. <laughs> <laughs> That's great! Great! That's exactly what I want. Have you got any more like that? Yeah, yeah. I remember another time during the Depression when I was totting down the Gold Oak Road and an old biddy came out of our house and she said, Hey, come over here. I just finished reading your article, Mr. Septo, and it really is first class. Absolutely fascinating. Just what we wanted. No, no, no I, I don't intend cutting it at all. I don't pretend to understand all the colloquialisms, but I'm sure the parishioners will. Yes, we're going to press today 5,000 copies. Is that the parish magazine? It is. Are our bits in? They are. Oh, it gives it a look. I've been trying to get one everywhere. So have lots of people. Oh, sold out, are they? No. 
<laughs> They've been impounded by the police. <laughs> first hour, at the first 500 copies being distributed, the vicarage was raided. <laughs> and the vicar was arrested on a charge of publishing obscene material likely to corrupt public morals. <laughs> I take it uh, your contribution was the crossword puzzle? That's right. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it? No. Not until they filled it in. <laughs> Right the way through, from one across to 38 down, a concentrated <laughs> square of obscenity, of filth and hardcore pornography. Oh, it's not bad. It's not, not worse than me Scrabble games. <laughs> Three old ladies had to be treated for shock down by Darby and Jones. <laughs> well, if they didn't know the words, how did they fill them in? I know some of you will get filled in. <laughs> I don't know what you're on about. The vicar didn't say nothing. No, of course he didn't. Poor old devil. He didn't understand the clues, let alone the answers. <laughs> Thank you very much again. At seven nights, hard graft on my part. Now going up in smoke from the incinerator down the local nick. There, you got your article in. What's the matter with you? Yes, sir, I have. And may I add that this, along with several other copies that managed to elude the police dragnet, and now changing ends at twice the price of a school kids edition of Oz. <laughs> I shall go to my room. <laughs> I've uh, just got three things to say to you. What's that? Six across, 13 across, <laughs> and 28 down. <laughs> Don't you dare use language like that! <laughs> you're 14 across. I will not be speaking to you like that. I'm your father. Not according to 16 down. <laughs> you filthy foul mouth swine! <laughs> 14 across, 15 across, sideways! Thank <laughs> you.